This is my wife's 1996 Toyota 4Runner. We built this thing a couple years ago on the channel. I pulled the body off the frame, found a new frame for it, did all the body work, painted it, lifted it, put 35 inch tires on it, and put in a motor that allegedly had like 230,000 kilometers. And overall, this thing has been an absolute rock solid daily driver ever since. Well, that was until now. Recently, it started smoking all sorts of different colors depending on how it felt that day. And it's really not running like it should. And this is a 3.4, arguably one of Toyota's greatest motors ever. And that brings us to this guy. Pulled from another running driving 4Runner to do an engine swap. And unfortunately, it changed hands between the guy that pulled it for the engine swap to another guy who decided to pull a head off of it to inspect it and make sure it's good, who then changed his mind on doing a 3-4 swap and it sat around until I got it. And because a head was pulled off of it, I don't trust it. So let's throw this head gasket and seal kit at it. I can already hear some of you guys in the comments section saying, well, if I'm going to reseal the motor, why don't I just reseal the motor that's currently in the 4Runner? Which is a valid uh, concern. It could just be head gaskets or something that are causing the weird smoke. The reason is I've never really trusted the motor that was in the 4Runner. From the beginning, I was told it had 230,000 kilometers, and I saw, like, no evidence to back that. That engine, before it went in that 4Runner, before I cleaned it up, was a heck of a lot worse than how this motor currently looked. The block of this is completely clean. It's not covered in grime and smudge like the one that I put in that 4Runner. This engine seems to be just a lot more well taken care of. Plus, this motor was given to me. The guy that took the head off was having a real hard time selling it because he took the head off. I personally know the guy that originally pulled the motor and I know for a fact that it was good and running. We've gone wheeling with him before. He just wanted to put a TDI in his 4Runner instead of running the old 3-4. And you know what? It is so much easier to do the head gaskets on an engine that is currently pulled from the engine bay than to try to do it inside the truck. So I figured instead of letting this motor go to the scrapyard, which is where it was gonna go, I'd try to save it and make life easier on me while doing the head gaskets. Now, I've also considered doing other things instead of keeping the 3-4, like maybe throwing a TDI in myself in the 4Runner so that we get great fuel economy. But at the moment, with our little one being like six weeks away at this point in time, it makes most sense like budget-wise to just keep it a 3-4. Because I don't know if you guys have done engine conversions before, but like after all the adapters, and special clutch kits and stuff like that. Engine conversions end up costing a lot of money. Let's take a look under this valve cover. It's dark. This is a known high kilometer motor, but overall, it looks like it's in good shape. There's no excessive wear really anywhere on the camshaft, so that's good to see. This is definitely the head that was taken off. One of the head bolts back here is loose. And I hope that when this was taken apart, all of these caps got put back in the same position they got taken off. These are loose. <laughs> no scoring? Yeah, that looks mint. And this one's missing a bolt. So that's cool. So this guy let's pop out now. Out of the second camshaft. Beautiful. I will say, one nice thing about this motor being previously touched is everything is hand tight, including the fuel rails. Now, oh, look. That whole lower intake manifold is barely bolted on. More loose bolts and more loose bolts. Okay, now this guy should just, yep, easy. This side's only got one bolt down to two. That's neat, but off. <laughs> Loose too. Time for the lower intake manifold. A lot of these bolts are not even in the right home. So that's also a cool trick. 
I'm fairly certain that we are gonna save this motor. I say that, and then I find plastic chunks inside the intake ports. Freaking cool. That's a nice bonus. Don't need you. Power steering pump. And then I think we're on to pulling ahead. I do want all the head bolts to find their way back into their original hole. So we're gonna use this cardboard and keep track of that. I think the head's ready to come off. Yep, sweet. That was way too easy. I know the head has been off this thing before, so not really a surprise. And here comes the head gasket. I spent the last hour or so with a razor blade and really cleaned up the mating surface here with the heads. And now, time for the head gasket. So according to my instructions, this little R goes on the back right corner here, just like that. I think that looks right. Yep, head time. Right there. Now I can take these head bolts, put them back exactly where they came from. All right, so now it says to torque them down to 25 in a very specific order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm gonna repeat that again. So now it says to go from that torque spec to retighten the cylinder head bolts to 90 degrees in the numerical order showed. So I'm gonna go 90 degrees. So I'm gonna go from here to here. 90. Perfect. That head is torqued. One side head gasket done. Let's move on to the other one. That is the head gaskets done on both heads. And the reason I didn't put the valve covers back on is because if you remember when we built the Forerunner and I did the valve cover gaskets and stuff in it, I actually painted the valve covers and the intake manifold. And in general, they just look a lot nicer than the stuff that came off this motor. When I pull the motor from the Forerunner, I'll slap all that onto here. But before this engine is ready to go over, I've got one more thing to do. And that is, Timing belt and water pump. What was really cool is that this timing belt didn't come with any of the timing marks on it. So I guess that's what I get for buying the Rock Auto Special. Anyways, this, as you can see, in time, in time, and on the bottom, that little dot is aligned with that arrow. So in theory, the belt is done. Not gonna lie, I fought with the belt for a good 45 minutes here trying to get it on, and then once I got it on one of the cams came out of alignment and then once i won and got the cam aligned all of a sudden the crank was out of alignment but we're good now so i've gotten pretty much as far as i can with this motor here all the new parts that i want to bolt onto it are done so before i can reassemble everything on this motor we gotta get the other three four yanked out of the forerunner I swear, this 3-4 did not want to get pulled. Every single bolt, like, decided to fight me. It was all, they were all stuck. But I think we won. So let's pull out the cherry picker, pull the motor out, and uh, hopefully have no issues. Although, 
I forgot to take the hood off. So I just got out here to start moving all the accessories and stuff from this 3-4 over to this one. And I just got a message from one of my buddies saying that, hey, we're in your local area, mind if we stop by? And uh, I think you guys will recognize them. <laughs> the famous dirt garage. Dude, this thing looks sweet. Mullet and all. Heck yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Sorry, I'm, I'm stunned by your rig. <laughs> this is it, man. Honestly, it's smaller than I thought it dude, was. Dude, I think that's what everyone says. Yeah, I, yeah. nice to finally actually finally. meet you. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's way smaller than everyone thinks. Yeah. It's like, the same width as a, a, a first gen Tundra. I feel like it's just because of all the tire poke, like in photos, it makes it look yeah, like it should be like a big a truck. Yeah, yeah, totally. 80 series 80, chassis, right? 80 yeah. series chassis, 76 Chinook, 3.4 motor, 5 speed. Pretty much everything you need. Close yeah. anyway, yeah, pop-up <laughs> camper, kitchen, bed, and a lot of kilometers. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah, worn in, not worn out. Well, we've been sitting here talking about Toyotas and stuff for what feels like hours. Yeah. But. These guys need to get on the road, so thanks for stopping yeah. by. Man, it's been it's been real. It's been <laughs> cool to finally meet and hang out and yeah. see your rigs and yeah. we'll have to get on an adventure. Yeah, actually out on the trail and not just in my driveway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. Get out. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. yeah. Real thanks cool rig and uh, we'll see you in the future. Until next time. Well, that was so kind of out of the blue, but pretty rad. Should I get back to work on your Forerunner? I mean, it would be nice, but also you didn't tell me they were coming over. That's pretty cool. I literally told you they were coming over. You said YouTube friends. You didn't say it was the Chinook people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's been a few days since I pulled this motor. There's a few parts I needed before I was ready to throw this motor in the Forerunner. And one of those being a throwout bearing because in the Forerunner, it started to squeak real bad. And the best time to replace it is, well, while the engine's out. So I went to Lordco Auto Parts to try to get a new one. Turns out there was no stock anywhere in Canada, and the only way that I could get one was through buying a whole clutch kit. And they said the normal price for their cheapest clutch kit was like $700. So instead I went to the Toyota dealership, talked to the parts department, and they were able to get me a throw up bearing from another store. But unfortunately, that was Friday, and because of the weekend, they couldn't get me the parts till the next Tuesday. And today's Monday, which means I've got today to get all of this over to here. In theory, we're ready to fire this thing up. Everything 
is connected that it needs to run. There's no cooling system, alternator, or power steering pump, or like anything in the front drive or belts because I want to test it before I 100% button everything up. I'm gonna check for fuel leaks and then, well, turn the key. It does help to reconnect the battery. I seem to always forget that. Never mind, battery seems to be dead for some reason, so I'll charge it up and try again. Turns out that the reason it doesn't have power is because I blew the 100 amp fuse going into the fuse box. So I'll be back shortly after I replace it. Take two, let's go. <laughs> I did an oil change, and before I slap the hood back on and grill, it's time for a test drive. Here we go. I don't know why, but uh, a little nervous. You know, after you build something, like a solid axle swap, and you're like, just hope it doesn't death wobble, and like, that it actually drives nice. It's kind of how I feel, even though this isn't anything like that. I think just because I did so much work to this motor that was kind of a gamble, but so far so good. Out of the driveway. All right. Oh man. She is smooth. No weird noises. Weirdly enough, the clutch seems to grab like right at the very tip like as soon as you touch the pedal and it's good and after if you goose it yeah the clutch slips try to adjust the pedal i think i did should affect that we are up to operating temperature no check engine lights and this thing runs so good yep that temperature is holding steady from the looks of it This ended up being an extremely frustrating video. On the test drive, it felt so promising. It was running so good. It was smooth. It felt really good, aside from the clutch issue. But as soon as I pulled into the driveway, I started noticing a weird clattering-ish noise coming from the motor. Oh! It could have been something that I did, I guess, when taking the heads off and putting them back on. It could be that this motor isn't actually that great. What I've noticed is it only does it when it's hot. Temperature. Now the Forerunner is up to running temperature, and you can hear from this side of the engine a little clattery kind of sound. It almost sounds like a diesel. So I guess you could say that this is kind of failed, and um. I've been going back and forth on what I wanted to do with it, what I wanted to do with this video, if I even wanted to release it. The reality is, you just don't always win. I've had a lot of luck gambling with motors, but in this case, well, I guess not so much. And I really don't know if it's something I did, or if it's a pre-existing condition in this motor. You can't really hear it while driving, and I bet if the hood was on, you probably wouldn't be able to hear it even more probably not even noticeable. It could have existed before is kind of like what I'm saying. From what I figure, it might just need a valve adjustment, but I think that might be above my pay grade. <laughs> so if any of you guys have a good, for sure good, and running 3-4, um, 
please let us know. Anyways, guys, if you can be a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button. And hey, if you want to support the channel, head over to dirtgarage.ca, pick yourself up some merch. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing, and, uh, well, we'll see you in the next one.